This is a color grading tutorial. In this video, I'm going to show you how I color grade dark skin and light skin images. So let's jump right into it. So my color grading process starts with Capture One. So the first thing I'm going to do once I open my image to Capture One, I'm going to come to my Adjust and just click on Layer and Mask and add a new feed adjustment layer. Now the reason why I'm adding a new feed adjustment layer, for example, if I just play with the white balance like this and I feel it's looking too much, since this is a new feed adjustment layer, I can just come to the opacity and reduce the opacity just like that. All right. So that's why I like working on a new feed adjustment layer. But I'm going to delay this layer because I don't want to do that. Now color grading depends on the look you are going for. Now for this dark skin image, I'm going to do two looks for you. Me personally, I prefer that dark melanin skin tone for my dark skin images. And I'm going to be doing that first. And after I've done that dark melanin skin tone for my own personal color grade, I'm going to show you how I color grade clients' images just to make it look natural as possible. All right. The first thing I'm going to do to get that dark melanin skin tone, I'm going to change the ICC profile of this image to like an M monochrome. So to do that, I'm going to come to my color and I'm going to come to my base characteristics. And now that my base characteristics, I'm going to see ICC profile. I'm going to click on it and just look for like a M monochrome neutral right here. So I'm going to select it and just going to desaturate the image as you can see. Now, see the before and the after. And I actually learned this from Tosin Junaid, one of Tosin Junaid's video. All right. Now, the reason why I did not create a new field adjustment layer because you cannot add a base characteristics to a new field adjustment layer or a new layer. It doesn't work. It only works on the background layer. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to add contrast to this image and just play with the exposure because exposure also plays a role about how color grading actually turns out. If your image is dark, it's going to affect the color grade. If it's too bright, it's going to affect the color grade. So that's one thing you should take note of. So to do that, I'm going to come to this layer and just add a new feed adjustment layer. Come to the exposure, increase the exposure a little bit, like so. And just come to the high dynamic range, take down the highlights, like so. And just use levels to add contrast. I'm going to come to my levels and just move the shadow parts of my levels inside like this to add contrast to this image. Now, the next thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to work on the background separately, right? So I just want to boost those green on the background. To do that, I'm just going to select my background. So I click on this background right here under layer and mask. And just going to select the background for me. All right, so it has been selecting the background. If I press M on my keyboard, you are going to see the mask. If I press M again, it's going to hide the mask. Right now, any adjustment I make is going to affect only the background. So I can just come to the exposure, take down the exposure a little bit. So I'm going to come to my color. Once I come to my color, I'm just going to boost the color of the green. So under my color editor, I'm going to come to advanced, click on this picker tool and select the green on the background. Once I select the green on the background, I'm going to come to the saturation, maybe increase the saturation a little bit, play with the hue and see. I think like this works for me. Or let me take down the saturation a little bit. No, I think I'm going to increase saturation like this. Also, maybe take down the lightness a little bit. So. Uh, before and after. For what I'm going to do, I just want to enhance this light ray that is coming from the top. Now I'm going to be doing that with linear gradient. Now to do that, I'm going to come to my layer, add a new adjustment layer, a new empty adjustment layer. After that, I'm going to select my linear gradient right here. Once I select it, I'm just going to drag from the top down here. Now if I press M, you are going to see my mask. Anything I do right now is going to affect that particular place. So I'm just going to come to my adjust and just increase the exposure of that particular place and just play with the white balance, add a cool white, white balance just to make it cool. You can see, see the before and the after. Let me just hide the mask so you can see. All right, so the before and the after, the before and the after. So this is what now do inside of Capture One. The next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to open this image inside of Photoshop and just do more of color grading inside of Photoshop. Now to open this image inside of Photoshop, I'm just going to right click, click on edit width and click on Adobe Photoshop. You can use 16 bits or 8 bits and you can use C for PSD depending on what you want. So you're just going to open this image from inside of Photoshop. Now, after doing my skin retouching and everything, let's assume I've done my skin retouching for this image. So let me just quickly use AI to do my skin retouching. So I'm going to come to my action and just click on this retouch for me right here or this one click retouch. I'm just going to click on it. 
So AI will automatically retouch our image for us. So see the before and the after. Now let's continue color grading this image. So after doing your scale retouching, the next thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to come to my gradient map. All right. Then click on this gradient. Click on basic. Click on this black and white gradient right here. Click on OK. And change the blending from normal to multiply. All right. So I change to multiply. I'm just going to reduce the opacity until I feel it's okay for me. Let's take it down a little bit. All right. So let this work for me. See the before and the after. The before and the after. I find that what I'm going to do for this image, I'm just going to create a stamp visible here. I'll press now command option shift E. And come to filter. Come to camera roll filter. And what I'm going to do inside of camera roll filter, I'm just going to scroll the way down to my best friend. My calibration. Come to the blue primary. And just take the saturation up about 20 and hit OK. Let's see the before and after of the color grading with this set of um, Photoshop. See the before and the after. The before and the after. And if it's too much, you can just reduce the opacity just like that. So that's how I'll color grade this image if I'm going for that dark skin tone. Now let me show you how I will color grade it if I want to do it for a client. Maybe the client wants it to look natural. This is what I'll do. So I'll come back to my capture one. And just reset everything I've done for this image. Reset. All right. Now, the first thing I'm going to do, let me remove my glass so I can see the colors very well. I'm just going to create a new fade adjustment layer. All right. Now, I'm going to go to my head dynamic range, take down the highlights, and just play with the white balance and see what works for me. Maybe remove the uh, magenta on the image, add a little of warmth, like so. Then maybe increase the exposure a little bit. Once I increase the exposure, I'm just going to add a bit of contrast to the image like so. So I'm going to add a new fill adjustment layer, a new empty adjustment layer. Just add that gradient, increase the exposure, increase the um, temperature, the Kelvin to warm a little bit like this. So see the before and the after, the before and the after. Now for me, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to open this image of Photoshop and do the rest of the color good. So I'm going to right click, click on edit with and click on Adobe Photoshop and click on edit variants. So once this image open, let me just quickly do the skin retouching with AI again. So I'm going to click on retouch from me right here. I'm just going to use AI to retouch my image. Let's just wait for it to load. All right, this is it uh, before and after. Now for what I'm going to do, I'm going to open this image inside of camera roll to do the color grading. To do that, I'm going to create a stamp visible layer by pressing the command option shift E or control shift alternate E if I use the windows and come to filter and convert to smart filter first. After that, I'm going to click on filter again and click on camera or filter. So from what I'm going to do, I want to scroll the way down and come to this blue primary again. Just move the saturation up. And next I'm going to do, I'm just going to play with the hue of the blue primary and see the color I'm getting. So if you are going for this red color, just take the hue down a little bit. This is too much. So I'm going to take it down a little bit like this. So if this is the look you are going for, you can go with this look. Also, if you want to go for this greenish look, you can go with this look. So it depends on what you want. There's no right or wrong way to color good. But I think I'm going with this red look a little bit like this. Remember, I want to make it look as natural as possible. All right. So that this works for me. The next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go up to the red primary and just play with the saturation and see. I think I'm going to take the saturation down a little bit like this. All right, so uh, before and after. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to make the body of this image to have the same color as the face. So to do that, I'm going to click on my mask right here. Once I click on my mask, I'm going to click on people right here or person one. And what I'm going to do from here, I'm just going to wait for it to load and just select the body because I want the body to look like the face. I'm going to select the body and click on create mask. After that, I'm going to scroll the way down and come to this point color. Select this picker tool and select any color I want the body to look like from the face. So I'm going to select this part right here. Once I select this part, I'm going to scroll the way down. Just increase the range and just come to this variance and just move it up. Immediately I do that, it's just going to try and make the body match with the face as you can see. So, see the before and after. Take a look at the body. All right. Let me take it back to normal, see the before and the after. You can see it still misses some parts. So I'm just going to move this range even more so that I can get all the image. So I'm going to move it to this side. So immediately I'm doing that, you can see 
this part that are a bit black, immediately I start moving this saturation range. You can see it has started affecting that particular part. Then I'm going to come to my luminance range and just play with the luminance range as well and just feel everything. So I think like this works for me. So let's see the before and after, see the before and the after. Obviously, they are looking the same, but it's looking too much. So I'm going to come to my variance and just reuse it a little bit like so. So uh, before and after. And finally, I'm going to come back to my edit. As I come to my edit, I'm going to come to my white balance and just play with the white balance and see what works for me. Let's play with the green. All right. So I think that this actually works for me. It's natural and it's good. So see the before and the after. I'm going to hit OK. All right. So that's all I'll do for this image if I want to color grade it. So let's see side by side the before and after from Capture One. I'm just going to click on Save so you can see the before and after inside of Capture One. Let's open it side by side. Okay. It has me saving. If I just come back to my Capture One and this is the image right here. Let me just put this side by side with the original image, reset everything I did. All right, so see our before and after. This one right here is our before, and this one right here is our after. So that's how I'll color grade that skin image. So for color grading, it's either you make it as natural as possible, or if you want to add your own style, you can do it. So there's no right or wrong way to color grade. Now let me show you how I color grade light skin images. Now to color grade light skin images, it's pretty much the same process, right? The first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to add a new feed adjustment layer, okay? And just increase the exposure of this image. Obviously, it's okay to dark. So I'm going to increase the exposure a little bit. Come to my high dynamic range, reduce the highlights, right? Then come to my levels, add a bit of contrast to my levels. Maybe open up the shadows a little bit for this. So, uh, before and after. The next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to come to my white balance and just add a bit of magentas to the image just a tiny bit also add a bit of warmth to the image just a little bit like so the before and the after now from here what i'm going to do i'm going to add another adjustment layer add a new feed adjustment layer then i'm going to come to my colors and just scroll the way down to my color balance right here now for this color balance if you want to add specific colors to your shadow areas your meters areas and your highlight areas you can do it with this color balance so there's no right or wrong way just see how it works now for the master if i want to add specific color to the overall image i can come to the master and just move it up it's going to add any color i choose to the whole image so if you are going for this look you can go for this look if you are going for this look you can go for this look so just depend on the look you are going for but i'm going to leave it at zero i'm not going to be adding anything so i'm going to come to my shadow and just add a bit of magenta to the shadow or just purple to the shadow and just move it up a little bit just for those shadow areas as you can see so if i add blues let's go to blues you can see i'm adding blues to the shadow area so like i said it depends on what you want there's no right or wrong way but i feel to just add this magenta color just to complement the reds on the dress so let this work for me also i'm going to come to my mittens and just add a bit of oranges to the mittens take the saturation up this slider right here is saturation. So if I move it all the way up, it means I'm increasing the saturation. Right? If I move it down, I'm reducing the saturation. And saturation is the intensity of colors on an image, right? So I'm going to take this saturation up. Why this one right here is the hue. Hue is to change color. So if I want to change the color, I can just play with the hue right here. So if I move it to the green side, I'm adding greens to the mid-tones. If I move it to the blue side, I'm adding blues to the mid-tones. If I move it to the magenta side, I'm adding magenta. If so I move to the red side, I'm adding red. So I'm going to add a bit of oranges to the mid-tones and just take it down a little bit. Saturation down a little bit. I feel it's too much. Now I'm going to come to the highlight and add a bit of oranges to the highlight as well and just move it up a little bit like this. Now this other slider right here is the lightness or luminous slider. If I move it up, it's just going to make the um, highlights bright. And if I take it down, it's just going to make the highlight dark, as you can see. All right. The same thing applies to the mid-tones. If I move the lightness up, it's going to make the mid-tones bright. If I move it down, it's going to make the mid-tones dark. So depending on what you want. Okay. The same thing applies to the shadow as well. If I take it up, it's going to be bright. If I take it down, it's going to be dark. I think I like this look. This faded look. Wow. I'm going to try it for one of my image. So I want to just reduce it. And this works for me. 
So, see the before and the after. The before and the after. And from what I'm going to do, I'm just going to open this image inside of Photoshop and do more of color grade. So, I'm going to right click, click on Edit with, and click on Photoshop, and click on Edit variant. So, once this image opens inside of Photoshop, after doing my skin retouching, let me quickly use AI to do my skin retouching. So once you open your image to Photoshop, just do your skin retouching first before you continue color grading your image. All right. So after doing my skin retouching, the before and after with AI, the before and the after. Now from what I'm going to do, I'm just going to open this image out of camera roll and just boost the existing color. I'm not going to be doing much because this image looks good already. I like the color I got from Capture One. So I'm going to boost the existing color. Now to do that, I'm going to create a stamp visible layer. I press now Command Option Shift T or Control Shift Alternative. Click on Filter and click on Convert for Smart Filter. Now this is why I'm Convert for Smart Filter so that if I make any mistake or not even if I make any mistake, if I make any adjustment, I can actually go back and fix the radius or change the radius later if I want to do that. That's why I like Convert for Smart Filter. So after that, I'm going to click on Filter again and click on Camera Raw Filter. Now for me, what I'm going to do, I'm going to come to my best thread. I'm going to scroll the way down, come to Blue Primary Saturation and just move it up to boost the existing color. I think about 30 works for me. Now for the Blue Primary Hue, if I move it to this side, I'm adding that orange look. If you like it, you can go for it. And if I move it to this side, to the blue side, I'm adding that green tint. If you like it, go for it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to move it to this orange side a little bit. All right, and I'm going to scroll the way up, come to my vibrance and just take my vibrance up a little bit like so. All right, and just come to the saturate exposure rather, maybe reduce the exposure a little bit. Okay, so see the before and the after, the before and the after, and I'm going to click OK. The next thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to add contrast to this image. So to do that, I'm going to click on my adjustment again, click on my gradient map. So like I did with the dark skin, that's what I'm going to do. Once I click on my gradient map, click on this gradient, click on basic, click on black and white right here, click on OK, change the blend from normal to multiply. OK, and from here, all you have to do is just reduce the opacity until you feel it's OK. So I think about 20 or 15 works only for this image. Let's use 15. Now, see the before and the after. Let me just go back with my daily side of Photoshop so you can see the before and after. See the before and the after, the before and the after. And I'm just going to save it so we can see the side by side inside of Capture One. So if I just open my Capture One and just put him side by side, first of all, let me reset this so you can see the default. So this is our before and this is our after. This one right here is our before and this one right here is our after. And if it's looking too dark, you can come to your adjust and just add a bit of exposure instead of Capture One. All right, so see the before and the after, the before and the after. So that is how I color grade both light skin and dark skin image. Like I said, there's no right or wrong way to color grade your image. What I do personally, I try to keep my image as natural as possible and just boost the existing color. That is what I do, except I'm going for an artistic look and that is optional. It's up to you. So if you want to learn how to use AI to edit your image from start to finish or how to integrate AI to your workflow, check out the video right here. I'll see you guys in my next one. Stay creative.